So in this homework, you basically write down an application that looks like this using Windows for application. And uh, basically this application uh, teaches you how to create a layout that is dynamically adjustable. Um, as I go through how this uh, application is made, you will realize that uh, the layout of uh, all the control objects that are in this form are extremely um, uh, flexible. Uh, they can be moved around. You can change their size without messing the uh, layout uh, and without distorting the layout, I should say. So um, uh, this um, application is called the Neat Office, which is made of uh, three subpanels. The main form is made of three subpanels. One subpanel is basically a scientific calculator that can do um, addition, multiplication, um, subtraction, division, uh, square root, square. Uh, reverse operation, mod operation. Um, I'm sorry, this is the percent, percent operation. And uh, like log operation, x to the power of i, sine, cosine, tangent, and uh, you know, uh, the plus minus negation operation. So basically, uh, this is a sort of complete uh, calculator. Uh, that's one of the panels. The other panel is dedicated to the day counter. You have two daytime picker and uh, basically the numeric up down module here counts how many days are uh, from from date to do to do date and uh, changing uh, any of these three will cause a change in one other uh, uh, object in this uh, panel. Uh, for example, if you increase the days, uh, then the two will change. If you increase uh, the two, the day will change. If you increase from, or if you change from, the day will change. Uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, the change of, to any of these three will change the other two. And also there is a uh, panel that uh, has uh, two list boxes and basically it allows you to do some graph operations. You can load a graph using, uh, uh, by you know importing a file, that is in TXT or CSV format. Uh, the file contains the adjacency matrix of the graph. And then basically that's a connected uh, weighted graph. And then this program allows you to use these buttons to basically apply uh, Dijkstra's algorithm or Prim's algorithm to find the shortest path or the minimum spanning tree for the, the important graphs. And then uh, finally you can um, print the results uh, or either print the result or save the result in a file system. Same for the calculator. You can always save the result if you want. Also, you can print the result. The print part is uh, the extra credit. You don't need to do it. But uh, this is basically, um, the uh, layout of uh, the program that you need to create. And at the bottom, you will see a good day message explaining uh, or specifying the uh, date and the current time that's, uh, keep, that keeps changing as you know, the program runs. You, know, you will see the uh, time will tick and you know, the second uh, will increase uh, gradually and then it always show you the current time. Uh, and then you have some uh, menu items on the top, and then there's a label and a progress bar that shows the progress uh, of uh, the graph section. 
I call this section the graph section. I call this calculator section. And I call this uh, the uh, day counter section. Uh, let's get into the details of it. In order to uh, explain this uh, uh, application's layout, I'm going to switch to the Visual Studio, and I'm going to explain how the uh, starter project looks like. This is available on, on Canvas. You can use it. Uh, all right, so let's begin by sh showing you how the document outline looks like in this form. There's a main form. Let's call this form. Let's give it a, a caption. Let's call this um, one second. Um, Let's keep it the same location. Let's call this form uh, the meet office. We can definitely change the icon for, for it. Uh, I have done some changes in the um, um, starter project, but not uh, too many changes. I haven't added any. Uh, I haven't added any. Uh, icon, you can add your own icons if you want. Anyway, so uh, this is the main form, and it is it contains the following. First, it contains uh, a menu strip on top, which is made of multiple um, items, file, open, appearance, help. In the assignment and specification, you will see basically all the details, all the, the menu items and sub-menu items and all of that. I don't want to get into the details of every single one of them because it's a very long project. Uh, you will see the details yourself. Then we have a uh, Tula strip container. The Tula strip container is a big panel with five sub-panels. One is the middle part which uh, you know contains all the three pieces the uh, the calculator the day counter and the graph section and also it has four uh, strips for uh, side panels we call them uh, two less strip menu items right i'm sorry we don't call them that give me a second we call them uh, two less strip panels not menu items we call them two less strip panel we have the left one, which you see here. This is the left one. Uh, we have the left one, we have the right one. We have the um, uh, top one, and then we have the bottom one, right? So there are four of them on the four sides of this uh, form. And also, we have the main panel that you see at the middle. Let me start by the top one. The top one, uh, if you look at the document outline, you will see that uh, in the top one, you have a Tula strip tree. Uh, it's a Tula strip, it's Tula strip tree. It's a, the, 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 the name of the object, but it's a Tula strip. Uh, you can all bring them from toolbox. You can just search in the toolbox to the strip. It brings it for you. And then the tool strip contains, as you see, one uh, button. The button uh, here uh, is basically um, used for modifying the appearance. The appearance basically uh, allows you to change the background of the graph section, the uh, the background color of graph section, the day counter, and the calculator. And also, uh, that, that's the only thing that is in the uh, top to the strip panel. In the right to the strip panel, as you see, we have a lot of buttons. Uh, I have labeled two of them as R and D because I later going to use them. R reads the uh, graph from a txt file and d uh, applies the dextrose algorithm on it these are just for the demo i will not show you all the details uh, but i just want to show you how 
you can connect your form to a, a class called graph, graph algorithms, which is given in Canvas. You already have it, and that basically implements all the graph algorithms like Dextra, like um, frames for minimum spanning tree calculation, and uh, uh, a few others. So it has all of these buttons uh, within a tool strip. Again, uh, having the tool strip allows you to have a much more flexible layout that dynamically uh, changes with the changes of the form. And then you have a left tool strip panel, this one, which is made of multiple key uh, buttons. These buttons are used for, uh, let's say, the sign, the cosine, the tangent, and other buttons that will help you um, input different operators for the calculator. It contains a, a tool strip and the tool strip contains a lot of buttons, right? And also they're not all buttons, we have separator. As you see, there's a separator um, here, there's a separator here, there's a separator here. Actually, you, you can see it here, this is a separator or this is a separator, it gets, it gets highlighted when I click on it in the document outline. If you don't see document outline, don't worry about it. You just need to go to the view, other windows, and then pick the document outline. It can be found uh, easily. Anyway, so uh, that's the left panel. The button panel is the last one that I'm gonna show you. The button panel, uh, the bottom, I should say the bottom, uh, Tool strip panel. Sorry, it's a little too small. I have a hard time seeing it. Has basically a status strip in it. And the status strip basically contains a, a label. It's a tool strip status label. And uh, you can add more, but we don't need. We only need a tool strip status label. And that label basically starts with good day today is, and then you know when you run the program, it shows you the current date and the time. Um, in order to handle that, we need to have a timer as well. So the reason that we have a timer is because we're gonna see the current time uh, in a live fashion. And uh, with that, I'm gonna only focus now on the middle part. I have, talk I have talked about the top part, the left part, the right part, the bottom part, now I, I'm going to focus only on the uh, tool strip container that control panel. The control panel, the middle big rectangle, is the host uh, to a split container. Split container uh, is basically a, a container that breaks this. A uh, whole uh, panel, the post panel into two separate ones that are uh, placed uh, vertically by default. You can change uh, the orientation if you want by going to the uh, properties and change the orientation from vertical to horizontal. We don't want to do that. We want this to be vertical. I can grab this uh, border and change it if I want, uh, but I don't want to do that. I mean, it's possible to change it. I don't want to uh, uh, change it, but you can basically uh, change the, the original size if you want, but I don't recommend that. Keep it the same. And uh, that uh, a split container breaks the, control the content panel to uh, two sub panels, panel one and panel two. Panel one is the left one, panel two is the right one. Let's focus on panel one first. Panel one is broken again into two more sub panels using another split container. We call it a split container number two, and that one has a horizontal, uh, orientation. You can add any uh, container if you want by just searching in the toolbox for a, 
this fluid container, I don't want to do that. I just did it already. So uh, you can use this. But you can add, and then you can set the orientation to horizontal. And then if you want to uh, duck it to fill, that's a great idea. Normally, the uh, split containers will be ducked to fill. That means they're going to completely cover the uh, containing uh, panel or sub panel. And uh, this split container, which was horizontal, in, uh, it was horizontal, not vertical. Uh, is the host for the calculator and the day counter. So the panel one is the calculator, panel two is the day counter. Let me first cover the day counter. Day counter has a splitter. The splitter is the red one that you see, the red line that you see. This allows you to dynamically change the border when you run it. I'll show you when I run it. I'll show you that you can change this red one. The reason I colored it with red is because you want. I wanted you to see that splitter. Then I have, this splitter is, uh, um, uh, has an orientation, uh, is basically ducked to the top, okay? Because it is inside the day, the, uh, it is inside the day counter. If it was inside the calculator, it should have been ducked uh, to the bottom of the calculator. But because it's in the day counter, it should be ducked to the top. And other than that, I have a numeric up down. Uh, I have two, uh, daytime picker, similar to the discussion forum that we had before, you know, you can just uh, use that same discussion to implement the functionality of these. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, in the, and then also you need to have some labels called one of the daytime pickers from date, the other one to date. And then uh, the, the, the numeric up down basically shows the number of days. And then uh, if you get out of this split container, number two, you're gonna get into another uh, piece here. Uh, I'm sorry, if you get out of the uh, split container to the panel two, then you can get into the other uh, panel, the split container to the panel one. This one contains a table layout panel. This table layout panel is my calculator. And basically I have, all the buttons on it and a text box on it. Just to show you how these are uh, set, I can uh, basically uh, select the table layout and then I can click on this uh, tag and I can edit rows and columns. Now you can see the percentages of uh, columns. I have four columns, e each one have same size, the same width, I should say. And then the rows are gonna be seven rows. The first row, which is the host for the display of the calculator is 22%. The rest are 13% each. Uh, so just keep it the same, don't change it. This looks okay. You can change it if you want, but I don't recommend it. And this display is going to host the, 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 the uh, calculations and all the values that you enter. And then uh, you have 24 buttons. You have to um, you know, set them each equal to either a digit or an operator. Uh, you know what to do. This is basically uh, homework one. And, uh, but this one is a little bit more complex. If you wanna, uh, if you have any question about how this uh, calculator should behave, you can basically use the Windows um, scientific calculator, we call it the old calculator, but in the scientific format, whatever the scientific format, uh, be, however the scientific format behaves, you have to make a uh, calculator behave in the same way. So that's pretty much uh, the answer to many questions you may have about the calculator. And uh, that's pretty much it. After uh, the split container to the panel one and two, you're gonna cl close the whole split container two, and uh, get back to the split container one. The split container one had panel one, which I discussed, and then panel two, which is the host for the graph calculator. It has a splitter, the green one. You see this green one? This uh, splitter has been ducked to the left. You can check out its dock. Uh, where is the dock? Dock left, right? And uh, it basically allows you to uh, change the border between the graph section and the other two section uh, 
dynamically while the program is running. And it has two list boxes. List box basically the holds uh, the, like, it's basically a list of uh, text boxes. Basically you can uh, select uh, one of the elements in the list and then you can basically use that as a uh, list of elements that can be displayed to the user at all times. The, the, the first list box is used for uh, name and um, path of files that uh, the, the user loads. Those, uh, those are basically files that contain the um, matrix uh, representation of different graphs. And then you can select any of them at, at any point in time, and then apply either the extra algorithm or Prim's algorithm on them generate the output. The, the output will be placed in the second list box. So the first list box is basically the input uh, graphs. The second list box is basically the output of the algorithms applied on those inputs. And basically when you see elements in the list box two, there are basically results. You can either save them into a file or you can print them. You don't need to implement any graph related algorithm. They're all stored in graph algorithms. I'll show you how to use it um, and that's it. You don't need to be worried about that. So if you don't know any of these algorithms, don't panic. You're not supposed to know. You're not, uh, you don't need to know. It's just need to apply them for, the, um, for this application, for this uh, program. All right, so uh, the next thing I wanted to mention was that within the same, uh, Sub panel within the split container one of panel two, you will see a strip which contains a progress bar and a label. This progress bar is of type tool strip progress bar, and this label is of type tool strip status label. And these two will basically show the current uh, status of the algorithms. Basically, when you run an algorithm, it takes maybe uh, less than a second, it maybe takes 10 seconds, it maybe takes two minutes. This progress bar allows the user to see how the progress is and doesn't wait forever or doesn't uh, get bored and close an application because it's not responsive. The user is allowed is is um, able to see the progress of the algorithms for themselves. And then I have a, a number of dialogues, the standard dialogues, open file dialog for opening a file, save file dialog for saving a file, color dialog for basically changing the background color of uh, the three sections, calculator and date time picker and the graph section. So this is pretty much uh, the whole layout. Now let's get into uh, some of the functionalities. The top left is basically homework one. I want to talk about it. You know what to do. The details are given uh, and you're asked to do uh, to basically uh, do uh, a bunch of operations. I'm going to show you the list of operations that you need to take care of. Uh, you need to take care of all of these. Uh, we have a list of uh, 11 elements. The last one, which is printing the calculator history would be optional, but the rest are necessary. The functionality of day counter is explained here. Uh, this is basically the same as uh, the last discussion. Um, and then you have uh, the Functionality of uh, graph operator, which is explained in detail here. You have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, functions. The last one is optional. And the last one is basically the print operation. So the print operation for the graph section and for the calculator section are optional. You're going to get a total of 20% extra credit if you take care of those, but it's unnecessary. So uh, let me um, basically go over uh, the operation that you need to do in the graph part. Um, if you look at the uh, graph part, you will see that, let me show you the layout one more time. You will see that there are different keys. One is uh, for importing a TXT file. One is for importing a CSV file. One is for importing multiple file files. One is to delete uh, an imported graph. 
you see this is for the list of imported graphs. This is the list of results. And uh, basically, one is for the, uh, uh, I don't want to call it Dijkstra. This is the, 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 the Prim's uh, minimum spanning tree algorithm. This one is the Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. And then these are the these are for the result. You can either save the result or you can print it. Uh, so you may say, how the how can we basically implement these uh, algorithms? They are all stored in graph algorithm.cs. Graph algorithm.cs is a class that have already that have already implemented it. Uh, it uses priority queue. So if you see priority queue.cs done. Uh, as why it's because it is used within the graph algorithm, but you don't need to use priority queue.cs yourself. It's basically a binary heap. It's a simple binary heap. Uh, it is used in different algorithms like uh, the Dijkstra's algorithm and also in the Prim's algorithm. So uh, the graph algorithms uh, class has a constructor which gets a tooless strip progress bar, a tooless strip uh, status label. And uh, a status strip, uh, status strip um, and then a form container. Uh, basically, these four are going to be uh, referring to the following. In the actual main form, uh, we have the progress bar here, we have the label here, the status strip is this one, and the containing form is the whole form that you see. In the constructor of form one, uh, which is the main form, I have uh, instantiated an object from uh, the graph algorithms and initialized that uh, initialized a variable called G, which is a graph algorithm. And then G is used to apply different types of um, algorithms that you need throughout this application. In the, uh, so this is already done, you don't need to take care of that. In the uh, constructor, we basically initialize uh, a few items like uh, a graph, which is a dictionary. It's a hash map, basically. Uh, MST solutions, SSSP solutions. MST stands for a minimum spanning tree solution, which is the answer to the, uh, which is the solution of the Prim's algorithm. SSSP is the uh, short form for single source shortest path problem, uh, which is going to be solved with the Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, we have a method which is internal, it's accessible from the form, it's called get MST. This is going to run the Prim's algorithm. Then we have a method called write MST solution two. This is basically um, writes the solution of minimum saying three into a file. Um, then I have read graph from CSV file. That's going to import the graph from a CSV file. You don't need to change it. This is already done. It basically changes the uh, label for you to show the progress. and also changes the progress bar for you. They are automatic. I mean, I'll show you. Basically, these are connected to the main form. You don't need to touch anything. Uh, you just need to call these um, uh, methods. Uh, for example, when the user clicks on uh, the, the buttons on the top, right? I'll show you an example you, you realize, but let me go over all the methods of graph algorithms. Other than that, you have the extra method, which basically runs the extra algorithm and keeps the progress bar uh, updated so the user know how long it's going to take for the extra to finish. Then it has write the SSP solution to, which basically allows you to store uh, the solution of a Dijkstra's algorithm into a file, the safe uh, to file name would be the destination. And uh, these internal methods basically use a bunch of uh, helper private methods, which I listed here. You don't need to know what they do. They are private, so they're not going to be used in the form one. Now, I just want to show you two, uh, like a very simple demo for the graph section so you know how to do the rest. Uh, the first button is an importer uh, of a graph using a TXT file or a TXT format. So in the con in a um, event handler of that uh, button, if you look, 
Uh, where is the event handler on the button? Give me one second. Uh, what happened to the button? Let's. Yeah, this is pretty uh, weird because let me let me let me see let me see. I don't think this uh, should behave like this. This should be correct. And then for D, we should have. This one. All right. So for the first one, I use Tula strip one click, which is a method that I show you here. It basically uh, uh, gets the path of a file that uh, I already stored. It's called undirected connected 1000. It's a text file that contains the uh, matrix, uh, adjacency matrix of a graph with 1000 nodes. And it's uh, called the read graph from txt file. And this basically imports, reads the file and imports the graph represented by the graph by the file. And then after this click, I will uh, click on, after clicking on this and importing the graph, I'm gonna uh, see the, uh, the graph in the first list box. It's gonna appear as one item. And then I click on that. Uh, and then I click on the Dijkstra's algorithm button, which is this one, and it will start calculating uh, the Dijkstra's. And when it finishes, it's going to appear in the list box too. That would be the result. So let me run it so I can show you. I hit the run button. It may take a little bit of a time. All right, uh, so if I click on this, as you see for a very small, uh, quick um, uh, half of a second, you saw the change in this progress bar and the label. Let me do it again. You notice this change in this. I'm gonna click on it, one, two, three. You may have seen it. And then uh, that basically means I have already loaded it, right? Now you, it's ready again. Then I will click on D. Now pay attention to this progress bar again. This is gonna run the Dijkstra's for me. It says running the extra, and you see the progress bar gradually changes until it finishes. And it says I'm running it on this scrap. And when it finishes, it says ready. And that's it. So let me go back to the, the actual form and show you one more time how the uh, Dijkstra button click event looks like. It basically uses the same uh, file and it basically calls Dijkstra on it. Dijkstra is the method that is already defined in the graph algorithms class. So you don't need to be worried about that part. Now, let me uh, tell you, I told you how the, the, the starter code looks like, but what, it should look like in the final version. You need to do it in a way that when I click on this, it should open a dialog, a file, an open file dialog, one of those standard dialogs that I have uh, placed in the, let me show you. Uh, it's gonna be this dialog, uh, open file dialog. It should open that, it should show this dialog and lets me uh, pick a file instead of, you know, always selects the file that I posted on Canvas. It can allow, it should allow you to, uh, to pick any file from your file system. So after I click on this uh, button, it should pop up that dialog and let me pick the right uh, file. And when I press okay, then it should uh, show the, uh, it should load basically the, the file and it should show the, uh, imported file in this list box as the first element. Then I can load more and it has to basically add to uh, this list box. So you can basically add 
5, 10, 20 different files. Uh, you can import 20 different files and they all will be visible in the list box. So, but I'm gonna, I didn't change the, the list box. I left it for your, uh, um, your work. You have to take care of that part. And after you have imported the file, then you can pick the, the file that you want to run in the extra algorithm on it. And then after you pick one of those elements in the list box, when you pick, click on them, they will be picked, they will be highlighted. Then you can uh, click on the D, which is the extra here, and clicking on this will run the extra and uh, it will show you this progress bar and the label. When it finishes, so a new element appears in the second list box, and that would be the result, right? Later, you can save the result by clicking on the next button, and uh, you can save the result in a, a CSV file or TXT file, whichever file you want. And it basically saves it. You already have, we already have a method uh, in graph algorithms that saves the, uh, the, the, the result into a file. You don't need to implement it yourself. So that's pretty much the graph part, you know, the uh, day counter part and the calculator part. So that's pretty much it. But the explanation of the homework is extremely clear. You can see all the details in it. Uh, but, you know, of course, if you have any question, let me know. And that's pretty much it. Thank you and have a good day.